Why is it that everyone says the key to body control is in the shoulders? Because while well, they, they are correct, but I think what tends to get lost in translation is the importance and the power that's in the hindquarters. Let's dive into that topic right now. So here I'm going to show you three things an unbalanced horse might do. For example, in the free ride, he might drop his shoulder there. Not only is it disengaged and ugly, that's very dangerous, they can fall with you. Another is drifting at the maypole. You see right here he's pretty disengaged, he's dropping his shoulder, and it results in the whole obstacle being pulled over. So another obstacle I need him really engaged for is the rope and lope. And right here I'm one-handed and I have a rope, so I can't slip my rein, nor can I really squaw rein it. And I need a solution to really engage him and keep him in that circle. And right there he drifted out and my rope got tangled. So how do we gain control of the hind? Um, I'll show you right now with haunches in. Possibly the best exercise for it. So the idea, I'm going to help myself a little bit, is to have his face, his head and neck and shoulders all pointed forward and his butt veering out to the side. My shoulders and my head and neck are facing forward too, and I'm sitting on my right pocket because his back left leg is now reaching forward to his center of gravity. Ideally, ideally it's four tracks. Each foot makes its own track, but depending on your horse's conformation, you might only have three. Oh. So haunches in really helps with the abs. It really helps with the top line and, of course, the butt, which really helps with collection. Right here I want to talk about my leg cues. What I'm trying to do is really put my outside leg just a little bit back to push that hip forward and I'm trying to sit on that right leg, that inside leg a little bit because that's where the center of gravity is. It helps me balance the most and admittedly it is very difficult on this horse <laughs> but I'm really trying to sit where his gravity is so he doesn't have to compensate and counterbalance me. I found with this exercise, the haunches in, that it, it really, really helped this horse a lot with a lot of different things. It really helped him with his lead changes, which were, they were hardly even there before. It really helped him with the maypole and the pinwheel and the uh, barrel turns. Everything that required a real tight turn, he was getting better and better and better at. So right here I'm working to correct the steering with haunches in. I can of course pick up the shoulder using two hands or I can slip my rein. But if I really wanted to ride one-handed, I need a solution to really push that haunches in. And by doing that, my horse is physically unable to drop his shoulder. And if you see right here, his haunches are pushing and taking up the space where his shoulders would have been if he was dropping them, helping to keep him balanced and moving right. Haunches in in relation to the maypole. So right here, I am overshooting it and there's no reason to try to lean and save it. I would pull it down if I did. So what I'm gonna do is really sit back and try to engage myself and my horse and bring those hips closer to the maypole. By doing that, I'm bringing all the center of gravity, all that weight and all that power in their hips closer. And I'm also freeing up the shoulders. The result is a really tight, pretty circle. And it really helps to keep you one-handed. It helps if, God forbid, your horse decides to kind of drift out a little bit. And it just really helps the picture. And I know sometimes we lean forward. Um, the EXCA look is an extreme, fast-paced, awesome look. But for this particular obstacle, I like to really sit back and try to take a slower approach, really engaging as much of my horse as I can for the best look. Haunches in and the rope and loop. Now, this obstacle is really, really good for haunches in because it gets harder the longer you do it. Generally speaking, you're wrapping an object and therefore your rope gets shorter and shorter. So not only do you need a tight circle, but you need a real controlled spiral. And by being able to do haunches in, you can very, very subtly control the rate at which you spiral by slowly moving that center of gravity and the, the power, the motor of your horse inward. You see right here, we kind of, we're going out a little bit. He drops a trot, but we're going out and I'm one handed. I'm in, I have a rope, I have a two rein. I can't cheat at all. So I need this solution to really work and still look really good. So haunches in helped me make this correction one hand. So just to kind of tie it into EXCA and all the obstacles, um, you kind of really need the motor and all that power that comes with it for anything that requires steering. But things like the serpentine, the uh, uh, the barrel patterns, the maple, the garrocha, the the pole gates, the rope and lopes, all anything that requires turns, the pinwheels, 
it really helps to have a lot of control on that but not only that but it's great for them too it's a very good exercise that helps build their top line really helps build their abs not to mention their butt and it just it really helps to work on these sort of things to make all all of your maneuvers fall fall into place so exa kind of seems to get this whole like misconception that we're just a bunch of these crazy riders and we just go and attack it with speed and we do attack it with speed but at least for me i'm really trying to do as many precise dressage type maneuvers i'm trying to work on his jumping i'm taking him to cow sorts i'm just trying to make this all around really good technically correct horse so that when i throw in all that speed and i'm on the course and i'm flying by in my free ride everything falls into place and frankly that's not how we're being judged we're not just being judged on speed though it is a nice plus and it is good to be fast that's not all we're being judged on the technique the judges really are, are looking at how engaged your horse is how rounded they are if their head is proper if they're not sticking out their neck hollowing the back any of that stuff they're really just perfect technically perfect so get out there and go work on your haunches in with your horse. Uh, let me know in the comments how it goes. I love hearing from you guys. Send me messages, any questions, things like that. And go join a local club. We always we always want new members. It's always fun to get out and, you know, have a fun event to do with your horse. And uh, thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm Johnny Flores, and this is Caliber. Oh, he started. <laughs>